it's your girl Ty here, which stands for Together, Individual, and Entertainment, coming to you with another five and one chapter preview from Gilded Rose, which is written by Anna Ham. And if you would like to read the whole entire book, you can buy it on Amazon, along with the audio that's also on Amazon. And believe me, this is not just the first. This is not just the only book that Emma Ham wrote for a remix of Beauty and the Beast. She also wrote two more books, which is called Emma Rose and Midnight Rose. So, I, mean, I, I really do love these books. I do. They're amazing. I just I just cannot get over the fact that this is the retelling of my favorite fairy tale, Beauty and the Beast. But still, um, basically, we're going to get into Chapter 3 for my five-chapter preview. Uh, basically... I just want you guys to hear the previews and then see what you say about, like, getting your own to read the rest of the chapters because this is an amazing book. They, they are. Okay, so, um, as usual, I'm going to turn on some fantasy reading music to make it a little more magical. So, here we go. Amisha stumbled through the forest. Twigs yanked him out of her hair, tugging at her backward like claws, caught in the dark strands. She tried to go slow. Noise would only bring them to her faster, and fear convinced her they would hurt her down. But she couldn't stop the thundering of her heart or the way in her muscles twitched to sprint. The forest was far more terrifying than she imagined. Dark trunks surrounded her, and she swore faces peered around their Bark, rustling leaves and breaking twigs threatened there was more in this forest than just monsters, but animals as well. She only been outside the city limits a few times with her father and never close enough to touch on one of the trees. He'd always said there was the land of the dread and she was never to go in. Now there was nowhere else. For her to go. She couldn't follow the road leading to the other cities. The dread and could fly. They could see her swoop down and pluck her off the roads as easily as a hawk snagging a chicken. Night had fallen, and somehow that made it more terrifying than before. That the forest came alive at night. What little moonlight remained served only to spear beings which made into the darkness all the more deep and mysterious. Her thoughts drifted back into her home, back to Little Marsh. And what she had done, the screams still echoed in her head. She could only hear them, the people who needed help. And all she had done was destroy. Why had her father wanted her to do what? Why and wouldn't he rather see the kingdom burn than the dread capture them? Father, he'd been so certain, and that she had done nothing. Was he still alive? He couldn't be. The streets had ran red with fire and blood, but she hadn't felt him go. It was like he was still here with her, in her heart. Every fiber of her soul was tainted. Now she had destroyed the entire city, saving him from becoming of the dread, but still taking their lives, and choked sound escaped in between her clenched teeth. There wasn't time for her, she told herself. She had to remain strong and keep going through this forest of entangled briars and shadows that seemed to move on their own. She couldn't bog herself down with guilt and thoughts of dying people, screaming and trapped within the fortress of a little marsh. Amish tripped at the thought, falling hard on her hands and knees in the dirt. Mud oozed between her fingers, and for a second, it looked like blood in a glistening light of the moon. What have I done, she whispered, sinking her hands deeper into the muck. What did you ask me to do, father? Wouldn't she ever be able to ease the torment in her soul? Would she ever be able to look anyone in the eye again once they knew she was the killer of Little Marsh. Her city had been a haven for all the Empire of Ember, a safe place and for all those who needed to seek asylum. And now there was nowhere else for anyone to go. Sniffing hard, she reached up and dashed away in the tears on her face. Mud slipped across her cheeks, but maybe that would help her hide if need. 
her father used to talk about in the days of when they could go out into the forest, the days of when humans haunted creatures in the woods for meat. She wrecked her brain for any memories of what they had done. He said they tracked on the creatures, but that wouldn't help her, though her stomach rumbled with the desire for food. She had no tools other than a small set of lock pins in her pocket. It seemed unlikely. She killed a deer with those twigs, snapped them to her left, followed by a heavy thud on her feet. Amisha breathed hot in her chest, and she slowly tilted her head. She couldn't see much in the, in the shadows, but she doubted the creatures existed in the forest who were large enough to make that sound. The darkness warped between a corpse and trees at least seven feet high and with horns as thick as her forearms, the shape of a dread moving inch by inch. She flattened herself into the mud, arms bent underneath her head. The creature lifted its head, snuffled, and then moved away and for a moment. A horn snagged on a branch above it, before the beast only gave a quick toss of its head and snapped the limb clear off. She couldn't stay here, not in the forest when they were still searching for her, although it made little sense. Why they were still looking? Certainly, they didn't care if they only missed one person to add to their army of monsters. They should have been focusing on trying to put out the fires in the city and stealing whatever humans they could from the veritable cauldron of souls within those walls. Instead, they had come into the forest for her, a single woman, nothing more than a more, mere scrap and compared to all the strong men in Little Marsh. Perhaps her father had been right. The dread in her home had stepped into the torchlight. They might truly be adverse to fire, but they weren't adverse to light. The others had left in the then the city burned though. That was enough to give her hope. Amisha dashed the guilt and fear from her mind. There wouldn't be time for mourning. But that time was not now. The creatures were in the forest with her, and that made this place infinitely more frightening. What had her father used to say? The dread cannot stand fire. It is the greatest weakness. If you are ever lost in the forest, or if you are ever hunted by their kind, and you need to know how to start a fire, my dear girl. The father, and as she asked, will a fire bring him to me? If you are in the forest, little one, then they already know where you are. She remained flat in the mud and for a long heartbeat, strained on by eyes and to find what she would need. Dry twigs and out and and logs, so the fire would sustain itself for a long time. She just had to get it through the night, and then she had bested them. One night in which she could get through in a single night. Amisha crawled through the mud and the slush to a small incline that led deeper into the forest. She had to get out in a wet, bog-like area and to somewhere it would hopefully be drier that she could gather all the materials needed for her plan. Though her progress was slow, she crawled in her way across the forest floors. Bugs bit into her skin, leaving itching wells on that stung whenever she touched them. A few times she heard breaking tree limbs and had to freeze for long heartbeats before the sound died back down. But by the time she found she needed, none of the dread had found her. Moving quickly, she gathered armful of bark and broken twigs. From the undergrowth, she scooped a handful of leaves into the ring around herself and buried logs underneath the leaves. The dried Emma would not attack her if she had protection, so through the night. Misha had one chance at this. Everything had to be perfect. Finally, she had set up her own personal ring of tinder that would keep her safe as a precaution. She also gathered a small bundle of thick logs and stacked them in the center. She bent down and set to work. Her father had taught her how to light a fire with just two sticks. All it took was friction and not movement to cause the smallest of sparks. Then she would catch it in the dry leaves. 
he had found and transported the ring. Easy enough, except when she rubbed the sticks together, nothing happened. No spark, just the bark coming off the twigs from her movement. Come on, and she thought, pressing them again, together harder. We've done this before. Amisha, and come on. Twigs snapped in the forest beyond. It wasn't the sound from an animal passing by. This was made by a large creature who had somehow impossibly found her. Letting out a low hiss, Amisha pressed one of the sticks together. Frantically, she thought she might have a little more time than this. And yet, now they found her. The twig shifted, moving with a speed she had no possible. Even as the palm grew, slick to sweat. A small plume, a smoke grew from the movement. She squeaked in an excitement, then dove to the small embers, cupping them in her hands. She blew on them until the flames grew to life. Sounds of movement grew louder and louder, but she couldn't be distracted. If she lost this tiny flame, then there would be nothing else for her. She would be captured, and the rest of her life would be spent as a winged monster. Misha wouldn't abide on by that she couldn't. Blowing hard on the fire, it began to burn through the leaves to her palms. She made her way to the ring. She sat out around her carefully. She placed it down and gave it one last long full air. The fire burst to life. It filled the ring of twigs and leaves. She sat up with a great gust. The sound seemed to echo through the forest. A sudden flame illuminated a monster's face. A dragon who stood close enough and might have reached for her. She stumbled back and landed on her bottom. She had sucked into the earth as she stared up at the creature in response to the flames. It lifted an arm to cast a shadow across its strange eyes. For a heartbeat, she thought it would come through. The fire stared at her with a single line of intent that made her think her father had been wrong. That these creatures didn't care at all if there was fire. That it would come for her as it had her entire kingdom. The creature took a step back. It strange and long in its flames. Bent, and it moved away and from the light. Arms still lifted to cover its face. The beast in pearl, leathery wings. And burst into the air through the canopy of leaves. The fire sputted and but remained glowing strong. Amisha shuddered fear and relief made her entire body shake until she could hardly hold herself together. She felt as though she might shatter. She survived. Her father had been right. She curled her arms around her knees, drawing them tight against her chest and tried to stop shivering. She should sleep. The night was young and the fire would keep going for a little while longer. But she didn't know when it would stop, when the creature were just waiting for the right moment. A cold breeze blasted by her. The flame shuddered along with a cold chill that danced down her spine. She would not get any sleep for not when her bitter winds autumn tried her best to take away her safety, curling into a tighter ball. She tried to ignore the mud, drawing her on her face and sticking her clothes to her sides. She would survive this. She had to. Amisha stared into the forest, watching the reflection of the fire bouncing upon eyes that saw better in the dark. She didn't know if those were the eyes of the drive watching its prey or some other animal in the forest that stalked her now. Either way, she would sleep the night. Okay, so that was chapter three of Gilded Rose from Emma Hamm. And I really cannot wait to get into book two and three for my five chapter preview. Because, like I said, if you like to purchase the books or listen to the Audible, they're on Amazon. And, I mean, this is a great teenage book. I'm serious. This is a book for teenagers uh, that is in high school or college. I mean, this is a good book for anybody who loved fairy tales and just wants to read a remix of the fairy tales. Me? I'm glad it's the Rose Trilogy books, the remix of Beauty and the Beast. So, this is Ty saying, enjoy reading. It's very educational and it's very fun. Bye! Are you looking for adventure or something funny to make you laugh? Maybe a mystery or a drama, some of this and some of that. A library is like a big buffet, try something different.